everyone it's Ross in today's video I'm gonna show you guys the best way that I know to start a collection of fig varieties and a lot of people I think are it's becoming more and more of a thing I don't exactly know why but I think a lot of people want to enjoy good food and growing your own figs is certainly one way to do that you can't buy figs from the store and expect the same quality from your own tree it's just not gonna happen there's also many, many varieties out there that have very different flavor profiles that uh, could really uh, make you just go, wow. And this is exactly the kind of thing that I would do is if I was building a collection of figs. This is if, I, if I was going to start over, I've had at some point 300 or so different varieties. Um, I now have currently about 160, 170. We're going down from here, but we're also adding more. Um, you know, things are a bit crazy, right? And I think that's a lot of what people tend to do when they get into this hobby is they get more varieties than they need. Um, they get more varieties than they probably should have. And it's probably unnecessary for them to have these varieties. For me, when I'm done this whole experiment, this whole thing of me collecting all these varieties from all over the world, getting them all to Pennsylvania and seeing how well they do here, at the end of the day, I'm probably only going to have five to ten varieties of figs. And that's it. That's that's it. We're done. I don't need more than ten varieties. Um, there are certain varieties that just perform way better, that taste way better. And I'm just going to make duplicates of those varieties. Why have 50, 100 different varieties if I can just have duplicates of the one that performs better than the others? So here's the big mistake that most people do. In order to get all these fancy varieties, okay, I mean all these figs that I'm showing you right now are all very different. The first thing I would do to get such a collection is that I would slow down and I would take the time to research. Now this is a website I'm showing you guys here called rfigs.com. This is a website filled with people like myself who have grown many, many varieties of figs. You can join this forum for free. You can also join other groups on Facebook. I'm a big fan of our figs because it's the most active fig group and probably the most informative fig group for uh, actually learning something. And you know, this particular community, like any community, you can make friends and you can ask people that live in your area. Just like myself, right in my um, my signature here it tells you my name my zone and where I live so if you live in a place just like me you can follow me and figure out what is good for this particular area right you can even ask me questions you can send me a private message you can do this you can do that I mean you can become friends with somebody who lives in your area and then that way you know what to grow in your area what fig variety is the best for your location or you can get many varieties that are the best or some of the best for your location and it's a very difficult question to answer if I were to make a thread on our figs and I were to say okay what figs do best in blank what figs do best in Arizona what figs do best in California you can get a lot of answers you can get a lot of people from your location telling you what is good and that's a really great start and what I would do is find the varieties from these people. If, if you can meet them online, that's great. If you know them in person, that's even better. If you can go to a public fig event, that's even better and make friends that way. Um, you know, find the varieties that everybody is saying you must have this one. You gotta, ha you gotta try this. You gotta have that. You gotta have this. Not because it's expensive. Not because it has a fancy name. Not because some Joe Schmo said it's good but because everybody in your area are saying that this is a reliable and tasty high quality fig that's worth growing and is worth your time and then I would find four of those this is what I would do you can change the numbers around however you want but I would take those four if I live from zone 7 which is where I live Philadelphia area and I would go all the way up to zone 11. If you guys live from 11 to 7, plant those four in the ground. 
okay? If I live from zone six to zone four, I would also plant them in the ground. But I would plant them extremely deep in those zones. So I would dig a hole. I would get a tree, by the way. That's a one gallon size tree, probably six inches by six inches, four inches wide by nine inches. It's about a gallon of soil in terms of nursery talk. And let's say the tree is about a foot tall. Six inches of that tree, of that trunk of the tree, I would bury underneath the ground if I live from zone six to four. And the reason why I'm putting them in the ground, no matter where you guys live in the country, the reason to do this is because the tree in the ground will grow so vigorously and so strong that you will actually get a lot of wood. You will get a very strong tree that you can propagate from and make multiple copies of these trees. Not only that, but if you live from zone 7 to zone 11, growing a fig in a container will not beat a tree in the ground. If you live from zone 6 to zone 4, growing a fig tree in a container will certainly beat, in most cases, unless you wrap the tree, it will beat something in the ground. Okay? So we're putting them in the ground. It's so simple to grow a fig in the ground, it's like a weed. I'm telling you. The thing grows so vigorously, so strongly, in I would say probably 80% of the country, you don't even have to water this fig. If you get um, about 15 to 20 inches of rain annually, you probably don't have to water it. All right. So let the thing do its, do its thing. At the end of that first year, you're still learning, right? You're still researching. You're still learning from people. You're still making friends. You're going to learn about propagation. Okay, That's the first thing I want you guys to know. You're going to learn how to graft. You're going to learn how to root cuttings. And you're going to learn how to air layer. Because all these trees that you had just put in the ground, we're going to make many copies of these. Okay, We're going to make uh, as many copies as you guys can stand, right? as you can put up with. Um, in my situation, I would say a nice number is about 20 container figs. I'm going to take 20 cuttings off of those four trees that I put in the ground and I'm going to root them. Over the winter time, just to my left here is a whole closet of 150 cuttings that I'm rooting right now. So you can do this over the winter time. Get them a nice little start. Just like starting seeds indoors. Give them a nice head start. You grow them to a nice size. Hopefully by the end of the winter time, when the spring comes, you've got them to a really nice size. Probably the same size you planted your trees last year in the ground in, right? It's probably, hopefully, well rooted in a one gallon size container, six inches by six inches. And then you can put those trees that we've just created, we've just cloned them, and we are going to put them in pots. We're going to up pot them into nothing lower than a 10 gallon size pot. This is really key because anything less than a, than a 10 gallon size pot is probably a waste of your time. Uh, I think 10 gallon is a really nice size. You can move that around usually if you're, you're healthy and you're strong. Um, if you want to put it in a larger size pot, go for it. That's up to you. The bigger the pot, the more figs you're going to get. Now. What this is doing here, and the whole reason why I'm suggesting this, is that we found reliable figs. We know what does well in our area. We've learned how to propagate, and then we've created from those existing trees that we've had. We have. We haven't spent any more money, and we have now created a nice base of figs for ourselves to then build upon our collection. So if we want to go crazy from here on out. We can. Why? Because now I have 20 trees on my patio in 10 gallon size pots that will reliably fruit for me every single year. And the trees in the ground, by the way, will fruit for me every single year. A little less reliably because I'm in zone 7, but they'll certainly definitely outpace if you watch my other videos on how to do this, especially in zone 8 or higher, they will outpace any container fig. So we've got a huge quantity of figs that we are now producing year after year. And usually about the, by the third year of the tree in the ground, the third year of the tree in the pot, we're getting a full crop of figs 
um, and we're getting them at huge quantities and we're really enjoying the fruit the time that we've spent by the third year we are enjoying ourselves and we're really thanking ourselves for getting into this this hobby of growing figs when we did okay so we got ourselves a nice base and this is probably the biggest lesson of the whole video because I I don't want you guys to go crazy I don't want you guys to go on Figbit here if I go on Figbit you can see all kinds of crazy varieties even some that I'm selling right now for outrageous prices and people will bid outrageous prices to try to get these okay so it's not really about which one sells the most I promise you there are hidden gems out there that everybody sees every single day and doesn't really care about because they're not talked about they're not expensive yet they're probably the best figs you can get Violette de Bordeaux, Ron de Bordeaux, Hardy Chicago, Improved Celeste. Those are the four most reliable, tasty figs in my climate that exist today. How much do they cost? Well, if I go on ediblelandscaping.com, a quite a reliable nursery, by the way, they will sell every single one of those trees that I just mentioned. Hardy Chicago. You can get a three-fourth gallon pot for $28. You can get a quart pot of Improved Celeste. By the way, this is Improved Celeste, even though it says Celeste, for $18. Plant this in the ground, and you'll you'll be amazed at how tree your how big your tree is in the spring or at the end of the season. So, I'm telling you, there's no absolute reason to not build yourself a nice base. And once you've got yourself a nice base, this is the next point I want to make is that you can go out and try any variety that you want to try. Let's say you want to try LSU Purple. You heard good things about LSU Purple. You're like, all right, let's try LSU Purple. So we, got, we, we buy LSU Purple. We either propagate it or we buy it as a tree. We put it in our collection. We're trialing it, right? We're seeing how good it is. Well, does it fill any gap? Well, if you go to my spreadsheet, which is in the link, the description of every video I've ever put out, you can go to the link here and you can see the different flavor categories that I have put together for you guys. Over my time of tasting many varieties of figs, I have found there to be many different flavors of figs. And this may be one route or one option that you guys select. So you may want to try different flavors, different types of figs. You may want to try the more exotic, really expensive ones like Smith or Black Madeira or Italian 258, right? These I would consider, you must try them, right? Col de Dom. You must try all these figs. But not until you get that nice base. And I think that's really important because you will really be thanking yourself. And I wish that I have done this too. This is all from my, my advice here is all from my own experience. It's all from things that I have made mistakes on and wish that I would have improved. I genuinely wish that I could have gone back, propagated 20 varieties of very reliable, four varieties of 20 figs of very reliable figs, very reliable varieties, and to this day I would be eating many, many varieties of figs. Instead, I have lots of trees that are franken figs that I've grafted multiple varieties onto. I've chopped them to bits, I've cut them back every year, I've air layered off many trees just to trade with people, just to gain more varieties. When instead, I really wish that I would have had, I mean at this current moment, I wish I have 10 Smiths. I wish I had 10 Pastelieres, right? I wish I had a few Violette de Bordeaux. I wish I had a few Hardy Chicago types and a few Ron de Bordeaux, right? I wish I had all, all those figs that I just mentioned in huge quantity, but I don't because it took me five years plus to figure out that's what I should have been doing from the beginning. <laughs> all right, so that is my advice is to get yourself a huge base. Slow yourself down. Don't go on FigBid. Don't buy every variety that you see, and you'll be much, much happier for it, okay? So, more advice. Let's see if I can come up with anything else here. So you can go on our figs, by the way, and read through this entire post. I put down my thoughts really well thought out. I always put out my thoughts more well thought out than I do when I speak to you guys. 
It just always happens like that. Now, I guess another thing that I would mention is that um, we need to learn the basics. So somewhere in there that we are, before we're researching, trying to find all these different varieties of figs that we can then get different insight on, right? Different flavor profiles, different experiences, right? Enjoy the enjoy the joy of collecting rare fruit, right? That's that's an interesting passion, and I'm not going to put that down. I don't want to put that down because that's part of what I do. That's really something that I enjoy. It's sort of even an obsession. So I don't want to put that down, but you certainly want to make sure that you got the base. Right? You got the base varieties of figs that are reliable. You've learned the basics, right? You learned how to feed them, you learned how to propagate them, you learned how to train them, you learned how to prune them, you learned how to water them, you learned how to fertilize them. Maybe I already said fertilize. But the point is, um, you need to learn the basics, right? Before you can then go insane, right? Why buy hundreds of dollars of sticks if you don't even really know how to propagate them? It doesn't make sense. Try your hand at a couple really inexpensive varieties, buy those, see how they do. If you succeed, then go out and buy yourself some really expensive varieties. You know, the way that I had suggested it is you're really only propagating from your own trees. It doesn't cost you any extra money to try and fail, try and fail. The only way you get better at this is by failing. So take my advice, listen to the people in your area get yourself a nice reliable base of figs and then you can then go out and try all these interesting varieties all these exotic things from all different countries whether or not they may or may not need pollination you know whether or not they or will even ripen in your climate i mean black madeira doesn't even ripen in my climate without a greenhouse what it's a super tasty fig, mind you, but it doesn't ripen without a greenhouse. Okay, so that's the point of this video, guys. I hope this made some sense. I hope this was informative. I really hope that you guys got something out of this because I wish that I would have seen this video, you know, five, six years ago and then listened to to the person giving me this advice. I know it's difficult, right? I know it's even difficult to listen to the simple fact that you should try and find varieties that local people are suggesting. Because who the, who wants to go out and find, talk to your neighbors, right? You may not even be the friendliest person, the most talkative person. You may never leave your house, right? Your, your neighbors may not be friendly, right? Why do I wanna go down the street find myself my neighbor who's also growing figs and say is this tree working for you do you like it is it fruiting for you i don't want to have to do that right i don't want to have to join online communities and, and make friends and try and, and make this you know put effort into this you know but i genuinely believe that no matter what it is you're growing whether it's fruits vegetables garlic onions lettuce anything there are varieties that have adapted to your climate that will perform enormously better than other varieties. So I really strongly suggest, if you're not going to take away anything else from my video, find people that are local, that know what they're talking about, that have been doing this for longer than you, and take their advice and learn from them. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this one was enjoyable. Catch you all for the next one. Take care.